Hello and welcome to another Lombardi Live. I want to thank all of you who have been watching me weekly here. It's Tuesday, it's 5 o'clock. And you know, I've heard a lot of drum solos through my life. And drum solos usually start out where you're sitting next to a friend and you kind of would look over and this is, this is really cool, you know. And then a couple more minutes in the drum solo, it's kind of like, wow, you know. And then a little bit later, it's like, it's like amazing. And then there's the rare time, which happens every time I see our guests play a drum solo, where you just look at your friend and go, what was that? <laughs> you know, it's just like unbelievable. And here he is, Thomas Lane. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. me, Thomas. Thanks, John. Hey, hi, everybody. Re re really a true story. Uh, <laughs> a multi-instrumentalist, plays guitar, bass, obviously drums, um, record producer at the same time, um, and a drum channel faculty teacher, which we're gonna talk about also, exactly. uh, where you can now get private instructions and you can take courses with Thomas at the same time. What do you think uh, in your life experience and going to the, you studied at the university, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that and the importance of private instruction to you. Well, I, uh, I was really lucky to have excellent teachers growing up. Uh, you know, I started really uh, at a very uh, young age of uh, five and, you know, moved sort of through the music education system in Austria up to the point where I studied at the Conservatory of Music in Vienna. And my education was always based on physical lessons. That was it. There was nothing available online and only much later sort of in my playing and practicing career there were videos, VHS tapes, and, and then eventually DVDs. But the first, you know, 20 years or so, it was all strictly physical education and uh, uh, physical drum lessons, in-person lessons. And, and that's, you know, how everybody learned at the time, and I'm sure it was the same for you. And you, as a teacher, of course, you're very familiar with that scenario. Physical in-person lessons are still the best way to learn. And if you can have that in combination with online lessons and sort of multimedia content, then that's the best of both worlds. The combination is always the sweet thing. But for me personally, at the time, it was all just physical in-person lessons. We break it down on Drum Channel, and we've talked about this. There's how you play, what you play, and, and why you play it. And how you play, it's kind of interesting, because we were talking a little earlier. The, uh, if you look at a drum set, da -da, you can look at a drum set, <laughs> by the way, uh, that produces the sound, you know, but you call it the instrument, you know, yeah. what do you play? I play drums, I play guitar, I play bass. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the big picture, what's playing the drums is really more the instrument than the drum set being the instrument, I think. Right, uh, yeah. Because it's how you it's use your body in order to produce what you want to play. It's the conduit, you know, this yep. thing, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, explain to me once that that's the, that's the string of the piano, that's the bell of the horn, yeah. but there's a lot of complicated things going on when you push the valves and hit the, the note on the piano. Uh, as opposed to something that's just a membrane that you're hitting that creates the ultimate, the ultimate sound. Exactly. That being said, I, I think you agree, there's no right or wrong way to approach, approach playing drums. Whatever is comfortable for you and whatever works for you is the right way. Mm -hmm. Depending on your goals and your aspirations will determine how much you need to practice, mm -hmm. which is a key word, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. It's the key word, yeah. How much time in your learning, uh, back in the early days, how much time did you put in practicing? Well, I tried to practice a minimum of four hours every day, you know, um, and and in addition to that, I was, you know, rehearsing with bands or, or playing gigs or doing recording sessions, or whatever, but a minimum of four hours a day. And sometimes, you know, often, actually, I practiced more than that, you know, six, sometimes eight hours, or my whole playing time per day would be maybe eight, ten hours sometimes, including rehearsals and gigs and practicing, etc. But even when I was touring then for many years, I tried to get four hours in every day. And that was really sort of organized, methodical practice time. And then there was all the other time that I spent on just noodling, or improvising, or jamming with people and, and, and rehearsing, etc. So a student watching from A to Z, uh, a lot of them have full-time jobs. They're, they're aspiring semi-pros, amateurs. A lot of people, especially on Drum Channel, are getting ready to get into college. They're in high school. Mm -hmm. um, if you have an hour or two hours a day to practice, mm -hmm. let's just stick with an hour. How would you, you know, suggest a, a student break that up? How much on chops? How much on? I would, I would every time I, I try to tackle something, any topic, and, and, and my, also my daily sort of practice schedule was always divided into three segments. And I tackled 
no more than three chapters, if you like, or three topics. So, and depending on what your goal is, you know, you decide uh, which those topics are. But for me, you know, I always set goals and then I work towards the goals and, and I made sure that my practice is always result based. So depending on what my short term goal was at the time, I divided my practice time into three segments and say, if I wanted to practice jazz, uh, or achieve something in the jazz kind of genre, then I would focus on, say, you know, feel, swing feel, jazz coordination and repertoire, like real book songs, you know. Uh, or I would focus, so those would be my three chapters. And then if I felt comfortable with jazz coordination, I would replace that with brushes or something, you know. Yeah. So I always had three large chapters. And then if you have an hour, I would divide it into three 20 minute segments and practice one thing you know for 20 minutes like uh whatever you know jim chapin's book you know page eight or whatever yeah, yeah. you know i'd go through that for 20 minutes and work on jazz independence and then i would go and maybe tackle brushes for 20 minutes and do s one thing advanced independence for the modern drummer jim chapin's yes book is the exactly one you're up. amazing book and then the third thing learn a song uh, out of the real book or something you know so and then i would repeat that until i felt comfortable with it and then maybe replace one of those things or two with the next exercise. So my time was always divided into three sort of large chunks. And again, depending on the time that you have, if you have six hours, you divide it again into three chunks of two hours each. You know, it never changed. I always worked on three things at a time. So you would have been too two hours, you wouldn't work on six things. You still pick three things. Exactly. And exactly. Focus on those. Yes. And I, I was able to check a lot of things off my list because if you focus on something really intensely for 20 minutes even, you know, or for two hours, if you have six hours to practice, you get a lot of work done. And if you stick with it and you focus and, and you really just concentrate on that one thing, um, you, you make pretty decent progress. And, you, and it's also kind of inspiring to see your progress. I kept the practice log, so I was actually able to see every week, like, okay, I checked that off the list, and that, and that, and that. And as you go, you know, through the weeks, you know, you, you get the feeling that you've actually achieved something, you know. Well, when I built our patented from channel metronome, it was kind of along those lines where I'd heard from you and from Chad Wackerman and back in my Freddie Gruber days, um, when you would take a rudiment and then you would approach getting it faster, you would want to stay relaxed, number one, practice it for a period of time, and then speed it up a couple of BPMs, and then practice it at that tempo till you were relaxed and it mm -hmm. came really fluid. So the drum channel metronome practices this metronome. It, this was funny trying to get this patented because we had to go back to the patent attorney a couple of times because it's a metronome, which the idea of a metronome is it keeps a steady pulse. Right. It can be in different time signatures. It can be you know all different tempos. Yeah. You can have it playing different coordinated beats at the same time, but it's a steady pulse. But I said, no, the unique thing about this metronome is it's gonna speed up. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> so they keep were time. Like, Wait a minute, I said, no, it's a practice tool. That's the whole right. idea of it. So, yeah. so you can actually set it if you wanna do rudiments at 120, and five minutes later it goes to 122, and then it goes to 124. Then next yeah. day you come back, you can look at where you were there and then pick it up another exactly, few BPMs. Yeah. But and the, that's the a great thing. I always enjoyed that. Obviously every day at the end of my session or during the session, practice session, I wrote down the, the BPM of the exercise I was practicing, which the exercise I was practicing, and then I wrote down comments and things like that. I had a real practice logbook. So I wrote down positive, negative comments about my sessions, just to sort of get an idea of where I was and, and also to help me with time management and efficiency when I was practicing. And, um, and the BPM, well, is a, a real sort of very, clear kind of clue of where you were in your development because to a certain degree tempo and speed you know reflects your ability and skill you know it's not true for everything in music but on the drums you know in particular like if you can play a paradiddle at 200 bpm you know you're you've achieved more than having you know being able to play it at 120 or something you know what i mean so you've you've sort of increased your ability and gotten better in a sense and it was always great to see in my practice log that you know you actually made progress you can just look at the numbers and go here it's 70 bpm a week later it's 98 and two months later it's 200 you know and it was always a really nice way of checking on my progress you know 
Speaking of the rudiments, you gave me an idea, which I think this is okay to do. We can give people a little head start. So if you're watching this Lombardi Live, this is why you don't want to miss Lombardi Live. There is a rudiments applied to the drum set course, yeah. which Thomas is putting together. Uh, it's a live course. You can sign up for it. There'll be 10 lessons that you'll be able to take over a period of 10 weeks, and he'll be giving them to you live every week. Uh, if you're interested in that or taking a private lesson with Thomas, maybe just email me right now at donlombardi at drumchannel.com, and I'll get you all set up with exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. And, and Thomas recently did a, a live lesson. We had 10 people involved in it. Uh, again, uh, I will keep you informed when we're going to be setting up more of those, too, mm -hmm. so contact me. Yeah. Uh, and in that live lesson, you showed something that I never thought of before, which you can do right here. You don't even have to be behind a drum set to do some practicing. Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> so give us a couple of quick lessons me, you, okay. can do right now. All right. It would be... Th okay, I've got my metronome right here. So This one... Um, this is not... <laughs> this doesn't speed up, okay? This is Just not so easy. <laughs> okay, where's my metronome? I'll, um, I'll, I'll be on default here because okay. I, I just dinged, I'll, my, I'll, I dinged I'll, my elbow a few I'll minutes ago. I'll go easy on you. Okay, let's go okay. for 80 BPM. Oh, 80, okay. Okay, so uh, I want you to put your wrist together. Ta ta talk to them and I'll put okay. my wrist together, okay? okay put your wrist together. With this this, um, this okay. is a great warm-up exercise. And this is what I used to do and still do sometimes before shows just to warm up because... It really gets the blood flowing immediately. Then you, so, you just slap yourself silly? Exactly. <laughs> okay. No, but you put your uh, wrists and elbows together if possible okay. and then just clap. This forces you to play perfect unison notes. Because if you're not in perfect sync and unison, you know, this kind of happens. Okay. If one hand is faster than the other. So per this forces you. As if you were having sticks in your hand, you're used to having them. Exactly. And this, basically, this exercise, this trains the forearm muscles that are responsible for r r uh, wrist strokes, you know, palm down, wrist strokes, and a large muscle group that you're working. Same muscles. It's basically like doing this. Okay. You know, only, you know, both hands at the same time in unison. So you would... On a drum, it would be unison strokes. And it qu requires precision, first of all, and it requires, you know, strength and power. Used to call those compound strokes, too. Same thing, yeah, right? Yeah, or same thing. flat flams, exactly. So, so at 80 I've BPM... I've never heard of that, a flat flam. Flat flam means not a flam, but yeah, together, exactly. right? Like okay. unison okay. stroke, exactly. So, a compound stroke. Oh. So, this is 80 BPM. It's not as slow as I thought. It's you want 16? A little slower, like... One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Come on. You want him to clap louder? Yeah, loud. Oh, I didn't hear that. Well, how big is your hand? Wait a you, minute. You, 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 your hands sound like brushes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a jazz guy. Very, very, I like the pianissimo, but... But this is 80 BPM because then uh, we want to speed it up, of course. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. That's 90. I'm breaking a sweat. <laughs> and then I usually do this for at least one minute at a time. Okay, and then I speed it up. To I hope you're doing that. Do this. Don't just sit there. Don't make me exactly. go through this. Do it. Yeah. So and then I speed it up to. And yeah, he did 100. this, and he did a three-hour course that exactly. he did. There was 10 you people. You don't need a drum set. All you need is this. You know? yeah. Yeah. We'll be doing this for three hours. Yeah. No, there was, that was only a few minutes of the three-hour yeah. course. Everybody <laughs> did have their drum sets. Yeah. Uh, and but again, we're going to set up another one of those. So email me, and I'll let you know when that is. If you want to yeah. get into one of those, it could be an individual course with Thomas that we'd be doing, that he'd be doing live. Or the other thing we're talking about is that whole series. In addition to just private lessons, too. Yes, private in-person okay. lessons also. While you're doing that, there was another one, too, that was equally weird. That one? Yeah. Yeah, okay, what, let's what do that. What is that all about? <laughs> well, again, you know, for a lot of the stuff that we do on the drums, we need strength in our fingers. You know, finger control technique, you know, Gladstone, even, even wrist strokes, etc. You need a lot of finger control. It's a big power. thing that a lot of self-taught drummers don't get into is using their fingers. Absolutely. And, and, and the downside of that, it comes up when they're playing grace notes because the grace yeah. notes are way too loud because they don't understand. All they have to do is open and close their fingers. Exactly. So, so here's a really great exercise, also a fantastic warm-up exercise for me. And it's basically, you know, doing this. You relax your shoulders, uh, pull your arms up like this, 
uh, stretch your fingers, uh, keep them as, you know, as far apart as possible, and then make a fist. And then open and close. That's all it is. So when you close, you wrap your thumb over your fingers like that. Exactly. Open, close. Open, close. Well, that's now, easy. That's it. Now, now really what next? Easy. Oh, wait and a now, minute. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're doing this in a sort of eighth note rhythm at 90 BPM, okay? Two and three and four. And open as far as you can, like all the way, and stretch your fingers apart as far as you can. So one and two and, and make a full fist. Tuck your th thumb in as well. Okay. So tuck the thumb in. Open, open all the way up. In. Open. Like one and two and three and like really stretch your hands, almost bend your fingers backwards okay. like that. So close, open, close, open, close, open. And now we're doing double time. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Come on out and there. You thought you were just going to be hanging out don't watching a your, show. Don't move your arms or shoulders or anything. It's all just in the hands. Two. Three and four and one and three and four and one and a full stretch. And now we do double time of that. One and two and three and four and one and two. It's not as easy as it and looks. You should be feeling something at this point. I'm, I'm feeling something Try at this to point. Still open the hand all the way. Four and one. Definitely and feeling two. it. Yeah. Doesn't take long. You're doing this, Don. Uh, you tell <laughs> I'm waving goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> two and three and four and yeah exactly so you can feel that it really works the form whoa yeah no yeah. question about it and it really gets the blood pumping great warm-up exercise sometimes i just do this for 30 seconds before i go on stage or something and my hands are warm you know it's a very high impact Try that next time you get on a flight, see if it gets you kicked off. They'll exactly. Say, what, what, is, what is that guy doing? Oh, I used there? to do all kinds of foot exercises on planes and trains and buses and drive people crazy with it. Because <laughs> plane, you know, floors sound really good. They've got a lot of low end. Yeah, well, Have I, you noticed well, that? Yeah. Well, that so was, as you see the planes, go do, go do, go do, That go was do. another one you did when we had the, the class. Uh, right, exactly. You had them doing, doing it on the floor. There's a lot of stuff you can do to work on strength, control even coordination that you don't need any drums for, you know, really that you can do. Because it's about, like you said earlier, your instrument to a very high degree is your body. So focusing on, on things like that, even without the actual instrument, is, is still efficient practice. Uh, you're a multi-instrumentalist. Uh, I do many things very badly. Ma ma yes. you, do, you do many things very, <laughs> very well, by the way. Uh, and it seems to be, you know, you were doing it for many years. The newer generation seems to be almost a mantra where they're understanding that in addition to having their primary instrument, in this case we're assuming it's drums, uh, it's important to learn other instruments, not only to be able to produce and write and arrange your own songs, but in order to understand more musically how everything fits together. But mm -hmm. how would you encourage people to, to get into that? How important is it for drummers to learn to play other instruments? I think uh, for any musician, it makes sense to learn about other instruments, not just for drummers. I think I would say, say this is sort of um, important for any musician. If you're a guitar player, it's, it's a good idea to know about you know what the drummer does and maybe be able to play a few beats and understand the mechanics of playing drums and and the the challenges and and also maybe get into keyboard a little bit so i i was lucky that my mom made me take piano lessons at the same time i started taking drum lessons um because she wanted me to learn a real instrument too <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, but I'm grateful for that because, because that's the way parent and, and something that was a little quieter too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a too. great story. And, uh, but I'm, uh, you know, looking back, obviously very happy with that, uh, because it did help me, you know, further down the road to get into other instruments and maybe pick, you know, learn bass also and, and a little bit guitar and just understand the mechanics of what my fellow musicians were doing and, and also be able to kind of be part of the conversation and communication about songwriting or, you know, chord structures. And, and, and that, I think, is a much more gratifying and, and satisfying, you know, experience as a musician. If you just can take part in the communication with others and talk details about the music and also look at the music from a 
another player's point of view because it affects what you do on the drums if you understand exactly what the keyboard player or the, the bass player is doing, you know, and where to maybe leave some space and, and not interfere with what you're doing. And uh, I think it's, it's really, really important. And, and I'm sure it made me a more sort of well-rounded, you know, musician, not just a drummer, you know, who hangs out with musicians. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of your musicianship and your teaching ability, you've won so many awards through the years. I think you were best uh, studio drummer for years on end in, in rhythm, uh, best clinician of the year, seven, eight years in a row uh, in, in modern drummer. Um, I know teaching is a huge part of of your daily life, but through pandemic and even before that, and in the future coming up, people can send you tracks and you can lay them down. How do they, get a, how do they get a hold of you? That's yes, another. absolutely. Um, the, best, uh, the easiest way to get hold of me is just send, it, send me an email, thomaslang00 at yahoo.com. And um, it's, it's very simple. Um, you send me you know, your requests, your music, some tracks, and I'll play drums on them and I'll send you a link and uh, send it back to you. I do this a lot, you know, these sort of remote sessions, especially during the pandemic, of course, but even before. Um, it, it actually, during the pandemic, maybe even a little less because it was harder for people, you know, to, you know, pay for session musicians or something when they had their own little productions going with the uncertainty of the pandemic, etc. But um, I do that a lot still, and it's a lot of fun for me. I really get into the music. Being able to have your own studio and organize your own time really allows you to get deep into the music, more so than if you were working in a studio uh, at somebody else's place, you know, because you, usually time is money, you gotta hurry things up, but this is a perfect setup because I have time to tweak sounds, you know, select different symbols for different takes, switch out snares or whatever, or drum sets. I have multiple drum sets always set up in my studio and I can go from a like 70s concert tom type kind of sound, real thuddy and dry to a really bright, ringy, you know, well projecting uh, modern drum sound or a minimalist kit. I have it all set up, so it's it's really fun for me to get into music and be creative and and work with different instruments and really cater to each song individually. Recently, talking to drummers who who do tracks at their house, seems like the common thread was they're much more critical in that situation than if they were in a studio. I, are you very critical of what you said? Absolutely. Sent back? Usually, when you work in a studio, somebody makes the decision. You're like, okay, we got to move it on. Like that's the take. Okay, next even if you're not 100% happy with it. But of course you trust the producer or the writer, whoever is in there calling the shots and, and you move on. And you learn to just fully accept what everybody else is saying. When you, know, you play and you, even when you're not feeling it's 100% there and you see like heads bopping in the control room and you know, they're happy, great. Even if you're not happy, you learn to move on. If somebody says, that's it, that was a great take, like, okay, Let's go, next one, at home. I'm not like that at all. I cannot sort of just accept little imp you know, imperfections or if it just didn't feel right from the first note, I just gotta do it all again. Same and thing like when you're looping, I bet. You, you look at the bass player, you. <laughs> right, exactly, that too, exactly. And also, I like to record full takes always. Oh. Very much unlike how most people record these days, especially drums. I never punch in or uh, copy and paste. I always record full takes and I just play the song. When I'm in the studio, I like to play more than, than, I'm, than edit. You know, I hate editing. It's not why I'm a musician, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not an editor, I'm a musician. So I much prefer spending time in the studio actually playing, even if it means I have to rehearse a song and play it 30 times. I'd rather do that than play five times and edit something together. So that's what I do and I like to record full takes because of that, because I think it has a different flow and it, it has a, a different energy when you play a full take. Because you have to really be careful, you know, to make a statement artistically but not overplay and play very precisely so a lot of focus goes into full takes 
And I think it's a really, and it's something that, that you can capture that kind of nervous energy or that magic, you know, if it's a perfect take and you really get the curve over the whole song right and the flow right, then it's, it's a really magical moment. And that's something you'll never get if you copy and paste or punch in. You just don't have that magic that you capture that's all between the notes, you know. And it allows you to film, which I also do often for some clients. They said, can you just film your session? I just turn the camera on. And filming recording sessions is always difficult if you're not doing full takes, because that means it's days and days of editing after the fact, which again, I much prefer playing than editing, you know. Even more complicated if there's a live band. We've done of several course. things here at Drum Channel. Uh, and sometimes they want one to guy punches in one guy punches in. <laughs> exactly. and, and in this case it was the keyboard player wanted to take the run going the other direction and right and it was uh, in chad smith's band and, and we left it that way because we thought it was really funny and he didn't think about it neither did we when we first edited it but right. the keyboard run was low to high but he wanted to do it the other way right but the camera saw him going one way and heard the piano <laughs> going the other way yeah, <laughs> which, which exactly. was great. Speaking of live, boot no. camps, we're planning on one coming up. Absolutely, uh, we're planning a boot camp. Yep. I'm planning uh, also uh, the, a, a 10 week course of applied rudiments. Yes. And uh, of course, I'm teaching both and a, online and physical. And a, and, and a bonanza. Yeah, and uh, a bonanza. Coming up a big one. Explain the difference between a boot camp and a bonanza for well, everybody. Well, the, the Thomas Lang Drumming Boot Camp is a three day event, usually, with eight hours of very intense drumming every day. Yeah, listen. Yes, that kind of stuff. We You're do doing this every it for day. hours a day. We start with those kind of things and then obviously move on to. You're on the drum set most of the time. Stuff. Yes, you're on the drum set all day all long. Day, all like day literally long. for eight hours a day. So, And it's a very intense boot camp where I cover specific issues that each one of the students has. We, we create sort of a, a curriculum for the three-day event out of a specific question that each student has. What they want to improve. What they want and, to and improve. And everybody it. will improve it. Exactly. Point. Their biggest weaknesses or their goals, etc. So I'll, I, make a, I create sort of a syllabus out of those questions for each camp and then that caters to each student's individual needs and desires and uh, and wishes and it's it's great also for the other students if one of them wants to work on independence you know 10 other guys will benefit from the same exercises so uh, it gives us plenty of stuff to do and we literally spend you know eight hours a day on the drum set playing which is for a lot of students a completely new experience but then again it is what it takes sometimes to to really make uh, major improvements and the bonanza is a five-day event and it's not just me teaching i invite drummers who i really appreciate and think are amazing and inspiring uh, both for me and also for the students and we have multiple classes going on at the same time i usually split the group of students into two or sometimes three smaller groups and then these smaller groups work intensely with me or guests like Greg Bisonetta, Virgil Donati, or Gergo, or Chris Coleman, or many, many others that I've had over the years. And, uh, and they get really interesting and valid input from m multiple competent sources, if you like. So they can ask me the same question they ask Simon Phillips or um, Kenny Aronoff, and they get everybody's take and view on the often the same things which i think often really drives the point home and makes students understand that this is truly what it is there's no more confusion and uh, also of course then they can work with each one of those artists individually individually on with one-on-one uh, -on -one lessons and and really get into every artist's head and understand their approach so i think it's a really well-rounded you know education you're getting in five days of, again, eight hours a day of playing. Let's take a look for a second at one of the more recent ones when you were sitting right there yeah. with the other guys playing right over here.
Very cool. In addition to online lessons, the idea of taking from time to time an in-person online lesson, if you can't get actually in person, and if you're in the LA area, you can actually come out and hang out with Thomas in the new studio, Absolutely. Uh, which is in Westlake, yeah. uh, and, and take lessons there. We have four practice rooms, a uh, great little recording room. Everything that happens online, yes, it's really important to be able to revisit exercises or see it from a different angle or have the archive of something to, to go back and double check. It helps with so many things, including keeping an eye on track on where you are and being able to go back to exercises and revisit, etc. But for me personally, the physical lesson was always the, the most efficient one and the most high impact for me. Yeah, you're going to copy what somebody is doing if you're watching them do it uh, mm -hmm. on, a, on a video lesson to the best that you possibly can but that one little tip where you're actually with the teacher and he's saying well no try it this exactly. way or no do it do it like this the and again it's such a physical instrument to play it's it's your body that's doing it mm -hmm. you know it's building the machine maybe the elbow should come out a little bit more first exactly. and then come down yeah. or maybe maybe you're not opening your hands enough Lombardi right. you got to get them all the way up so <laughs> I would have done that, and I probably did that on the course, and I thought, oh, I got this down, and now right. it's like, no, I suck. You know, so those are the things you're gonna get when you're taking a lesson right. with somebody. It's the feedback. Yeah. You know, when you have sort of a recorded drum lesson or a bass lesson, whatever, a golf lesson, a yoga lesson, that's what it is. You will never get a feedback from it. And that's the one sort of essential uh, thing you need in a, in a lesson, a really, you know, quick correction that makes such a huge difference. You know, when you, you, you hold the stick right and I just touch you as a teacher and yeah. I turn your wrist. Yeah, exactly. Like just move it slightly that way. Uh, it, that's boom. human like touch and the element exactly makes all the difference. You, so mentioned, go you mentioned golf lesson as well. <laughs> right. I I rem it reminded me of the show we have on Drum Channel with you and Luke Holland. Where oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tom we both need lessons. Thomas was teaching. <laughs> He didn't play golf. He never played golf. And Thomas is a decent golfer. Well, uh, I wouldn't say decent. So, but, but, but the pressure was on, you know. And <laughs> we were but he on. taught me baseball in return. He did teach you yeah. baseball, too. But we were in the last tee, and you got to watch it on Drum Channel. It's yeah. in our original shows. Uh, and we did that last putt. That was going to be the closer. It was like right. the 20-foot putt. We tried to sink it for half till they kicked us <laughs> off of the court. It's like Took the whole afternoon. This is, this is not going in. I don't know what's happening. So, so as good as somebody is at drums, that's okay. Just remember, they might not be good at everything. Absolutely. Uh, he does wield a mean vacuum, though, because when I went up to the new <laughs> studio that we have in Thousand Oaks, uh, it's got a glass front, and he was killing it with the vacuum I in the, was. In, I was in the lobby. It, right. for you. it was fast. It was Thomas <laughs> laying fast. It was in time. It was I'm totally pounding fun. on the door to try and get exactly. in. We have a beautiful place in uh, Westlake. Yep. Very close to, you know, Thousand Oaks area here in, in, in Los Angeles. The whole TO Drum Club will be involved. Yes, the Thousand Oaks Drum Club will be involved. We'll be teaching physical lessons. We have guest artists, many of the incredible drummers that you can also find online here at Drum Channel. will be teaching physical lessons and we will continue to create regular lesson packs uh, for students there. And uh, so we are accepting students at any time, email Don, don at drumchannel.com. Don, don Lombardi, don Lombardi at, at drumchannel.com. Drum also, we have your universe. Yes, that and, too. And Thomas like plays out of this universe, but you can join him in his universe, which is a series of lessons that has hand technique, yes. foot technique. We have bonus lessons. Those are on-demand courses that you can take. And the key is to get immersed in what you're going to be learning. I think that's the cool thing. Yeah. When you actually would take a private lesson with you or a course, it would be like, hey, I'm working on your stuff. How am I doing? Yeah. You know? And that's exactly. where the value comes in. If you think, you know, if you're counting pennies and you think it's the best value to just take online lessons and not supplement that with in-person lessons, mm -hmm. you're not getting the best value for your dollar. Absolutely. You know, if you really want to learn and get better, and the mm -hmm. better you get, the more fun it is to play drums, right? Absolutely, exactly. Uh, and that's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. If, you, if you're beginning, obviously weekly lessons are good because every week the teacher's gonna have you right there to be sure you're doing right what you're doing. And then the online lessons will supplement that so every day you can be sure you're doing it correctly mm -hmm. by looking at what's going on after he corrects you when you actually get into your real lesson. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, 
supplement that maybe once a month if you're a semi-pro or a pro and just like, hey, I want to take a lesson with Thomas or exactly. let, me, let me see what's going on or I'm working on this beat that I thought he did. How cool is that? I want to figure it out. Am mm -hmm. I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? So, so it's, it's all available to you here on, on Drum Channel. Thomas, I thank you so much for joining me here today. Don, uh, always a pleasure. Thank you've you. Got, you've got a busy schedule, many things going on. You can go on to drumchannel.com and search Thomas Lang because he's in a whole bunch of shows we have on with Jim Keltner, with the Matt Garska, all the things you did with the boot camp. Mm -hmm. um, shows, you know, you'll see him playing golf. You'll see him on a, <laughs> on a baseball field. Um, we had a lot of fun things going on. Absolutely. That, day. that was a great experience. That, that, that was show. a great. There's, well, I'm, I'm going to leave you with this. What was the biggest surprise of that event? Do you recall? When you got your, uh, you were you were when going we were to golfing, get, you, you were going to get no, oh, you, were gonna get, you were going to get a Manny Petty. Oh my God, well, the one that sticks out immediately um, as a very memorable moment is when we went to get Manny Petty's with Chad Smith, Luke Holland, and I. And you didn't know I pulled that off, right? You pulled that off. He didn't know Chad I was knew. Gonna, yeah, Luke didn't. Luke didn't know, right? Yeah. But, but uh, as soon as Luke took his shoes off. His toe somehow ended up in Chad Smith's mouth. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that, but that was a that was a pretty unforgettable moment. So, again, I can't thank you enough for joining me today. Anytime, thank we'll you. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time here on Lombardi Live. Also, and join me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And we'll be back next week. See if we can cause a little bit more excitement. <laughs>